to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Great Detectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And if you have not already, I do encourage you to pick up my ebooks, All I Needed to Know I Learned from Columbo, and All I Needed to Know I Learned from Dragnet. Each examines the careers and histories of seven great fictional detectives and policemen and the life lessons that can be learned from them. They are available as ebooks and as audiobooks through audible.com or the Apple Store. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of Mr. Chameleon. The original air date, June 8th, 1949, and this one is the Organ Grinder Murder Case. Next, Mr. Chameleon and the Organ Grinder Murder Case. <laughs> Tonight we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Headquarters in his most famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you all know, is the famous and dreaded detective of Central Police Headquarters who frequently uses a disguise or impersonation to confuse the criminals he is tracking down. In tonight's case, he appears in a particularly interesting disguise which the audience will at all times recognize. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Organ Grinder Murder Case. It is midnight, and in a dark and ill-lighted street in lower New York, the only sign of life is the dejected figure of an organ grinder who has stopped, evidently to rest, in the doorway of a house. Then out of the darkness, another figure reveals itself. A young man walking briskly along, he sees the organ grinder, he pauses before him, and we hear him say, So, you waited. Well, you're not going to get what you expected. Put the stones in here. I've stolen the last jewel for you. I'm done. No man has ever been done with me. Those who tried are dead. Give me those jewels. Don't make me... I've stolen. I betrayed for you. Now we're quits. Try anything and I'll turn you into the police. Hey, what's that? That gun. You can't... (laughs) Yes, my friend. Dead men never talk. Dead men never talk. And a few minutes later... We hear the astute and dreaded detective, Mr. Chameleon, of Central Police Headquarters, approaching the body and saying to his partner, Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold, Decently dressed young man, Dave. Respectable looking. Killed by a bullet at short range. Look through his pockets. See if there's anything to show who he is. Oh, there's his wallet. Hmm. New York driver's license. Paul Reader. And they... Number of his business cards. Paul Reader, Carton, and Dijon. Swanky Fifth Avenue jewelers, Mr. Chameleon. Yes, that's it, Dave. But it's certain that he wasn't delivering jewels in such a horrible neighborhood at this hour of the night and to an abandoned house. A yeah, funny place for him to be, all right, Mr. Chameleon. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the uh, address on his license there, Dave? 1147 Hudson Avenue. Mm-hmm. 
All right, Dave, see how fast you can get us to 1147 Hudson Avenue. Yeah, wait. What's this here? Looks like a cylinder from a hand organ. A hand organ, Mr. Chameleon? Yes, the kind organ grinders use. Dave, I wonder if... Well, let's uh, keep going. What is it? Does Mr. Paul Reader live here? Yes, I'm his mother. But isn't this rather a late hour to call? It's past midnight. Mrs. Reader, I'm Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. My, my boy in trouble? No, that couldn't be. One of the most distasteful duties of a police officer, Mrs. Reader, is to bring sad news to, well, let's say to a mother. What's happened to my son? He's been in an accident. Take me to him, Mr. Chameleon. I fear it's too late. No, not dead. Murdered, Mrs. Reader. Murdered? But where? How? In a street off Chinatown. Shot to death. We don't know by whom. In a street off Chinatown? Mm -hmm. What was he doing there? <laughs> and now hold yourself together. Dave, you help her to a chair, please. Don't let yourself go, lady. Here, sit here, Mrs. Reader. That's good. Oh, murdered. Paul, Paul. You can't bring your son back to life, Mrs. Reader, but you can revenge his death by helping the police find his murderer. You can... The phone. Why must it ring? Hello? Oh, Kitty. Kitty, no, he isn't here. Kitty, darling, Paul has been murdered. The police are here now. Yes, come over. I, I need you to... <laughs> Steady, Mrs. Rader. <laughs> that, that was the girl Paul was to marry. She lives next door. She's coming here now. Does she often ring up this time of night, Mrs. Rader? She must have had a premonition. Does she often ring up this time of night, Mrs. Rader? Kitty Lansing is like my own daughter, Mr. Chameleon. She worked at the same place Paul did. At Carton and Dijon, you mean? <laughs> yes, the jewelers. Was your son doing well there, Mrs. Reno? They thought a lot of him, Mr. Chameleon. When my husband, his father, passed on a year ago, well, we were bad off for money. And they not only gave Paul the money for the funeral, but... Yes? <laughs> you were saying, Mrs. Reno, you... They, they gave Paul the money to pay all the hospital bills uh -huh. and a big raise in salary besides to help him take care of me. Paul said they told him that. Unusually generous of them. Unusually. I always wanted to go to the store and thank Mr. Dijon personally or write the firm a note, but Paul said they wouldn't like that. So you did not? No, Mr. Chameleon. Uh -huh. I never did. And now Paul is dead. <laughs> Was your son generous with money, Mr. Reno? Generous? Mm -hmm. Yes. Why, well, you know, he'd never let a beggar go without giving him some change. He had a kind heart. Too few of us have. Detective Sergeant Arnold here is the same time. What, Mr. Commander? He has a particularly soft spot for organ grinders. He'll cross the street to give one a quarter any day. Oh, uh, that's right, Mrs. Reader. Isn't that strange? Paul did the very same thing. That is... Yes? Well, th there was an old organ grinder who stopped before our door quite often. And Paul always went outside to give him something. That... Organ grinder will miss your son, Mrs. Reader. It's quite sad. <laughs> Kitty! Mother Reader. Oh, this is Mr. Chameleon from the police. Kitty. Mr. Chameleon? Oh, I was afraid of this. I warned Paul. I begged him not to go out tonight. Why? What did you fear? Did you expect Paul to be murdered, Kitty? Not murdered, Mr. Chameleon. Of course not that. I was apprehensive. He shouldn't have met that man in such a dreadful neighborhood. What man, Kitty? I... I don't know, Mr. Chameleon. I, he didn't say who the man was. I just knew he was planning to meet somebody. I don't know what you're hiding, Kitty, but I can advise you to tell the truth. Keeping things back won't help you or the police. I'm not hiding anything, Mr. Chameleon. I, I don't know whom Paul was meeting. I... I don't know... Perhaps I can tell you, Kitty. In fact, I am fairly certain that I can. <laughs> An organ grinder. An organ grinder? An organ grinder? Oh, Kitty! Wait, no, she's fainted, no. Mr. Chameleon. Organ grinder. Oh, 
no. We found this cylinder from a hand organ beside Paul's dead body. Now, you'd better tell us what you know, Kitty. Detective Sergeant Arnold will put you on that sofa, and then I'll ask you questions that must be answered truthfully and immediately. What... What are they, Mr. Chameleon? You worked at the same place Paul Reader worked, the famous jeweler's firm of Carton and Dijon. Yes, I did. Did Paul get you your job there? Or is that where you met him? No, Paul didn't get Kitty her job there, Mr. Chameleon. Kitty's father got it for him. Kitty was already there. Kitty's father? Kitty, is your father employed at Carton Dijon still? Oh, no, father's in business for himself. What kind of business? He has a small wholesale business. Jewelry business? Yes, jewelry. He knew Mr. Dijon and got both Paul and me jobs there. Where's your father now? What is it, Kitty? I... I don't know. You don't know? I think he's at a meeting of his lodge. It's past one o'clock now, Kitty. Do his lodge meetings last all night? Detective Sergeant Arnold, go next door and bring Kitty's father here, if he's at home. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. Oh, I wish you hadn't done that. Send for my father, Mr. Chameleon. Why are you afraid, Kitty? Why don't you want your father here? He has a weak heart. I'm afraid the news of Paul's murder might excite him. I shall handle him accordingly. In the meanwhile, I'd like to know why you fell into a faint when I told you that I thought an organ grinder had killed Paul. Yes, why did you, Kitty, dear? I don't know. I don't know. There he is, Mr. Chameleon. <laughs> Kitty's father, Nicholas Lansing. Oh, Father, Paul has been murdered, and, and Mr. Chameleon says he Let was Let me killed tell by... your father about my theory, Kitty. I'll break it to him gently. I see that you are a heart patient, Mr. Lansing, so please don't excite yourself. Heart I... patient? What gives you that idea? Father. Never mind, Kitty. There's nothing wrong with my heart, Mr. Chameleon. I got an extra insurance policy only last Mr. week. Mr. Lansing, when I told your daughter that I have reason to believe her fiancé, Paul Reader, was murdered by an organ grinder, she fainted. How do you account for that? An organ grinder? Did you say that, Kitty? No, she did not say it, Mr. Lansing. I said it. And I asked you why she should suddenly go to pieces when I said it. Why, I... Have... And why did she try to blurt out about the organ grinder the moment you stepped into this room, Lansing? And why did she try to stop my questioning you by saying that you were a heart patient? What's the idea? What's behind this? It's a complete puzzle to me, Mr. Chameleon. I, I can only account for it by saying my daughter Kitty is a nervous, excitable girl. And right now, anything she says doesn't mean a thing. She was infatuated with Paul Reader, and now that he's dead, I think she's out of her mind. A very interesting family. The daughter says her father is a heart patient to keep the police from questioning him. The daughter is, according to you, her father, virtually a psychopathic case. Well, it won't go down, Lansing. It won't go. Now, let's get down to the facts. If you think my daughter and I know anything about Paul Reader's murder, you're mad. If you don't know, or at least don't suspect someone very near to you, you're right. I am mad. Now, Lansing. Yes? You are in the wholesale jewelry business. Diamond dealer? In a small way, yes. And you got your daughter Kitty a job with the great firm of Carton Dijon. What of it? Dijon is a friend of mine. In what capacity did your daughter Kitty work there? In the accounting department. In the inventory division? Let me answer Mr. Chameleon's questions, Kitty. Sometimes in the inventory division, sometimes in another I one. see. First one place, and then another. It's an odd thing. What's odd? Nothing. Except that if inventory books were falsified, half the jewels in Carton Dijon's could be stolen without their ever knowing. I've seen it happen. Now, look here, come And in what department did Paul Rito work? I don't exactly know. I he... can tell you the department, Mr. Chameleon. My son, Paul, had the most trusted job in Carton Dijon's. He had complete charge of the inventory. Thank you, Mrs. Rito. Very refreshing to find one truthful person. One person in this investigation of a brutal murder who does not attempt to conceal what she knows. Dave? Yes, Mr. Chameleon? Get the commissioner of police on the phone, please. If he's not at headquarters, ring him out of bed. I must talk to him now. Is there an extension to this phone, Mrs. Reader? In the kitchen. I'll take you there. Thank you. Thanks to your lack of cooperation, Mr. Lansing, I'm beginning to see light in this case. A case that will go down on the books as the organ grinder murder case. If you're so sure an organ grinder murdered Paul Reader, why do you keep on questioning us? Why don't you arrest the organ grinder, if you can find him? Because in the history of the New York police, I can't remember a single case of a legitimate organ grinder having murdered a man. At least while he had his organ with him. <laughs> What's that, a parable? When you and your daughter find out, Lansing, it may mean something that would give you a chill if you knew it now. Mr. Chameleon, I got the commissioner. 
he's on his way to headquarters, he thinks it would be better to talk there instead of on the phone. Yes, so do I now. Good night, Mr. Lansing. Good day. Good night and my sympathy, Mrs. Rita. Mrs. Rita, by tomorrow I will have the murderer of your son. <laughs> And that is my theory, Commissioner. I get you, Chameleon. You think it's a case of somebody impersonating an organ grinder. Well, draw your own conclusions, Commissioner. The boy, Paul Reader, worked for Carton and Dijon, the most famous jewelers in America. He is found murdered near Chinatown, Mm -hmm. the cylinder from a hand organ beside his body. I follow, Chameleon. The girl he's engaged to and her father, a jewel dealer himself, practically disintegrate when I say I think an organ grinder killed him. Right. Well, the boy's mother... A decent, truthful woman tells a fantastic story about her son's incredible pay rise and gifts of money from his employers. Yes? The murdered boy is head of inventory at Carton and Dijon's. His fiancée, Kitty Lansing, is the accountant in charge of inventory. And her father got them both their jobs. Mm -hmm. I say the boy was stealing jewels and delivering them to a receiver disguised as an organ grinder. Pretty clear. Well, what's the next move? Well, I want you to... Assign my good friend Detective Tony Soretto to find out if any organ grinder covering the district where the murdered boy Paul Reader lived sold out or disappeared from his route. That's the first thing. Soretto will get that for you fast, Chameleon. Then what? Well, then tomorrow morning I want you to meet me at Carton and Dijon's. I know Carton socially. And then? I want you to question Carton while I'm questioning Dijon. Mm-hmm. Because you don't want... Exactly, Commissioner. I don't want them to have the chance of talking alone together or of signaling each other. But those men are beyond question. Well, I'm not saying that they're not. I only know that Kitty Lansing's father and Kitty herself are concealing something. They have the key to Paul Reader's murder. Okay, Chameleon. Tomorrow morning at nine, then. Carton and Dijon's. Mr. Chameleon and the Organ Grinder murder case continues in just a moment. If you ever take anything to relieve an ordinary headache, remember this about genuine Bayer aspirin. Its single active ingredient is so gentle to the system that mothers give it even to small children on their doctor's advice. Now this is important, for it means that Bayer aspirin is something you can take with complete confidence. It means that besides fast relief, Bayer aspirin also offers you the dependable relief that's important to your health. For Bayer Aspirin is not only ready to go to work in two seconds, but also has an unmatched record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. So don't experiment when you're in pain. Take no chances with drugs that have not been proved by years of successful use. For the two most important kinds of relief, use something you know is completely dependable, genuine Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Now back to Mr. Chameleon and the Organ Grinder murder case. It is now the next morning following the murder of Paul Reeder found on a street in Chinatown with a cylinder of a hand organ beside his body. Chameleon has concluded he was murdered by a receiver of stolen jewels disguised as an organ grinder. For the murdered man worked for the famous jewelers Carton and Dijon, whom we now find talking with the Commissioner of Police and Mr. Chameleon. The Commissioner is saying... I'll go in to see Mr. Carton while you're with Mr. Dijon here, Chameleon. Right, Commissioner. But why? Why the Commissioner of Police and the great detective Mr. Chameleon here at one time? What is this, Mr. Chameleon? I cannot understand. The police, Mr. Dijon, have reason to believe the jewels have been stolen from your establishment. That would be impossible. Our checking system of inventory is too complete. It is perfect. Perfect systems have been gotten around before, Mr. Dijon, and the man in charge of your inventory, Paul Reader, has been murdered. It can have no connection, Mr. Chameleon. It is impossible. Not so much as a cheap diamond has ever been taken from Carton and Dijon, and our stock runs into millions. Do you mean to infer that Paul Reader was a thief? He was killed by a man impersonating an organ grinder, Mr. Dijon. Oh, is it a fairy tale you have come to tell me, monsieur? You are certain that no jewels have been stolen from here? It is all too ridiculous to answer, Thank Mr. Thank you, Camille. Mr. Dijon. For your information, the police will check your inventory very carefully within the hour. And then we'll know. 
Oh, incidentally, none of your delivery vans will be permitted to leave here without my order. We will Thank not Thank you tolerate... again, Mr. Dijon. Goodbye for the moment. See if the Commissioner of Police is ready to leave now. Well, Commissioner. Oh, ready to go, Chameleon? I've talked to Carton. Right, Commissioner. Dijon says that nothing is gone. And Carton says he's suspicious that some of their most important pieces are gone. Uh-huh. Claims they have an antiquated system of inventory, so he hasn't been able to find out. Mm-hmm. And watch this one, Chameleon. Carton told me one other thing that seems to fit right into your theory. Uh, let's get into the car and we can talk on the way back to headquarters. Uh, what was the other thing that you were starting to tell me uh, Carton said, Commissioner? Oh, he told me that Dijon was a nut on amateur theatricals. What? Yes, Dijon is the guiding spirit of that French theater group in the village. And in one of the last plays they did, there was an Italian organ grinder running through the whole second act. A friend of mine dragged me down to see that show. You don't mean that... But, well, here we are at headquarters, Commissioner. Detective Sergeant Arnold is waiting outside for me, I see. Mr. Chameleon, I've got the information you wanted. Well, what is it, Dave? Detective Soretto checked up to see if an organ grinder in Paul Reeder, the murdered man's neighborhood, had sold out recently. Mm-hmm. You were right. He sold out, organ and all. To whom, Dave? He doesn't know. He says a girl gave him $500 saying she was acting for some charity outfit that wanted to put an old Italian man in the way of making a living. And that's all he knows. A girl? I wonder... Could that girl be Kitty Lansing? Try to get the organ grinder to identify her, Dave. Quick. Now, one hour later, in his office at police headquarters, we find Mr. Chameleon questioning Kitty Lansing, the murdered Paul Reeder's fiancé, together with her father, Nicholas Lansing. And Mr. Chameleon is saying... So you insist, Kitty Lansing, that you did not buy a hand organ from a man named Luigi Leone? Mr. Chameleon, why should I do a thing like that? What would I want with a hand organ? The question is, did you or did you not buy a hand organ from the man Leone? What are you trying to do, Chameleon? Intimidate my daughter with a lot of utterly ridiculous accusations? Don't worry, Father. He can't intimidate me. I'm not afraid of him. Detective Sergeant Arnold, bring in Leone, please. Come in, Leone. Mr. Leone, you look at this girl very carefully, and then tell me... That's the girl, Mr. Chameleon. I swear she's the one. He's a liar. I've never set eyes on him. All right, Leone, once again. And remember, you will have to swear to what you say in a criminal court. I'll swear it in the name of the holy mud. This girl gave me $500 for my hand organ. It's a fortune to me, Mr. Chameleon. She's the one. I'll kill that Italian... Let that old man go, Lansing, or your head will get the end of this gun. What? Dirty business, Mr. Chameleon. This old devil is here to lie my daughter and me into jail. So you're in it too, Lansing. A father and daughter, John. Don't eh? you dare accuse my father of Paul's murder. Mr. Leone, was any man with this girl when she bought your hand organ? There was a man waiting for her outside, Mr. Chameleon. And this is the man, eh? To that, I cannot swear. I did not look at him uh, very carefully. But this is the girl. I swear she's the girl. Why, you lying... Kitty, it'll take a lot to get yourself off this spot. He's lying. I'll prove he is. And listen, Mr. Chameleon, I dare you to arrest me on what this man says about me. I have no idea of arresting you now, Kitty. Dave, you show Kitty Lansing and her father to the street, please. What, Mr. Chameleon? You letting this girl out? Show them to the street, Dave. And uh, thank you, Mr. Leone, for doing your duty as a citizen. Goodbye. Well, I'm either dumb or in a daze, Mr. Chameleon. Uh, What, Dave? If I wasn't afraid, I'd say what Leone said. You're letting that girl out? What's the answer, Mr. Chameleon? I'm not looking for an insufficient evidence finish to this case, Dave. The fact that Kitty bought the organ from the organ grinder Leone doesn't mean that she murdered Paul Reader. Now, from here on, we must move fast, Dave. But how? We've got to find the hand organ, we've got to find the murder gun, and arrest the murderer. We've searched Kitty Lansing's father's house, the murdered lad's house, Paul Reader's. So what next, Mr. Chameleon? Have it looked for at this address, Dave. Yeah. And while that is going on, an expert inventory taker named Hendrik van Gorn, a real Dutchman from the diamond center of the world, Amsterdam, now an expert for the New York police, is going to go over Carton and Dijon's inventory. So you, Mr. Chameleon, become Hendrik van Gorn. 
Sounds like a good disguise. Yeah, I am Hendrik van Gorn, and I uh, want to... Uh... Does that sound all right, Dave? Swell, Mr. Chameleon. When do you start? Ten minutes. I promised Paul Reader's mother to get his killer today, so... No time to waste. And shortly after, we hear Mr. Chameleon in disguise as Hendrik Van Gorn, busily checking the fabulous jewel stock of the famous jewelers, Carton and Dijon. And he is saying, You didn't cling to me like a leech, Mr. Dijon. I get on with my job, Pastor. This whole business of checking our inventory is madness, Monsieur Van Gorn. There is not one jewel missing. It is the madness of the detective chameleon. And in that, I agree. That chameleon is a funny one. But I have my duty to perform, and that's what I'm paid to do, so... Uh, Well, uh, my partner, Monsieur Carton, will pay you to get it over rapidly, Monsieur. As much as five hundred dollars, Monsieur Dijon? Carton said twice that, Monsieur Van Gorn. One thousand American dollars. This is a deal, Dijon. So now bring in that young lady out of Thomas Kitty Lansing, please. But why? Well, I must, uh, to make this checkup look real at police headquarters, get her to verify my inventory. I thought I heard you call me, Mr. Van Gorn. Uh, yeah, indeed, yes, young lady. Uh, you remember that um, inventory list you gave me this morning? That is a phony. It's a fraud. What? Ah, uh, fraud. Shows $170,000 in diamonds as being in this box. They're not in it. They are missing. This girl stole them, Monsieur Dijon. Sacre bleu! Sacre fouet, Dijon. What? He's not an order to Dijon. He's Chameleon, the cop. Chameleon? I'll take the gun, Dijon. Try anything and I'll kill you. More madness. What are you trying to do, Chameleon? Arrest you and Kitty Lansing for murder. For the murder of the once decent and clean boy, Paul Reader, that she got her clutches into. It's a lie. I didn't. Oh, yes. You made a thief of that boy in the guise of love, and then... I suppose I murdered him. I hear Detective Sergeant Arnold coming now with the evidence that will pin the murderer down. Her father, Chameleon. Her father, Nicholas Lansing. Shut up, Dijon. Here I am, Dave. Bring it in, please. Here's the hand organ, Mr. Chameleon. We found it just where you said it would be. At the theatrical warehouse of the French players in the village. Why, you... Don't try to get out, Dijon. You are the man who killed Paul Reader. Watch him, Dave. Don't let him get near that drawer. Got another gun there. You dirty cop coming here like this? Oh, even your French accent was phony, Dijon. You think you're clever, don't you, chameleon? None of that, Dijon. Put the cuffs on both of them, Dave. Dijon, when we get into court and I show how you, using your talents as an amateur actor, impersonated an organ grinder to receive the jewels Paul Reader stole from your partner and delivered to you under Kitty's loving direction, you might begin to realize that I am a bit clever. Incidentally, you should have burned the clothes that you wore that night. You'll see them next at your trial for murder. Au revoir. And uh, that, Dijon, means uh, till we meet again. Go along, Dave. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. It's only natural that when you have an ordinary headache, you want fast relief. And to find out how quickly Bayer aspirin is ready to go to work, all you need do is test it in a glass of water. What happens to a Bayer aspirin (coughs) tablet in the glass also happens in your stomach. And the speed with which it disintegrates indicates the speed with which it's ready to go to work. Now, when you make this test, you'll see that Bayer aspirin tablets start disintegrating almost instantly, are actually ready to go to work in two seconds. Hence, they provide remarkably fast relief. So when you need something to relieve pain, be sure of how quickly it will act. Be sure with Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces in The Roof Garden Murder Case. 
Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson and written by Frank Hummert from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. Music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. You probably have heard or read about the remarkable discovery that actually cuts down tooth decay, ammoniated tooth powder. Today, Dr. Lyons, America's favorite tooth powder, is available in this ammoniated form. Based on a formula developed by University of Illinois scientists, it destroys bacteria Lactobacillus acidophilus, which cause cavities. Thus, it not only cuts down tooth decay, but pain, worry, and expense as well. So to reduce tooth decay, to have sounder, healthier, handsomer teeth, Use ammoniated Dr. Lyons tooth powder. Both regular Dr. Lyons tooth powder and new ammoniated Dr. Lyons are at all drug and toilet goods counters. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in the Roof Garden murder case next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. Well, this is a pretty solid episode, particularly by Mr. Chameleon standards. I like the clever bit of misdirection by having the killer be using a fake French accent. I would kind of wondered at the beginning, like if we're going to have an inverted mystery, but then it occurred to me that this probably wasn't a real organ grinder. Even though I didn't have the absolute confidence that Chameleon did that real organ grinders don't commit murder, it still occurred to me uh, as a disguise. And even though I thought Chameleon's disguise was initially pointless, he was actually proved right for why he did it. Oh, and we also got a mention of quartz for the first time. So Mr. Chameleon isn't a law to himself. Anymore, at least. The listener comments and feedback now, and we have a comment from Derek. And Derek actually had a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, uh, he writes uh, regarding the episode Murder and the House of Torture. Did I hear this right? Uh, Chameleon says there are two more bodies over there. And Arnold says, gosh, Mr. Chameleon, their clothes are half torn off, too. Chameleon says, yes, I think the killer meant to torture them, too, Dave, but um, something interrupted. And Arnold says, lucky devils. And the award for uncalled for moment of the year goes to Dave Arnold. Well, I I would say, Derek, that it is only... April at this point, but I do have a a feeling that if we were to do an award that uh, indeed Sergeant Arnold would probably be a front runner. And then he asked me a few questions. I answered via email, but I thought I'd share the answers as well. Uh, And he writes, okay, I'm getting back into Philo Vance, and here I thought Mr. Chameleon was over the top with puns and cheesiness. I've got some questions for you. If you were to live in the radio universe, would you rather be Dave Arnold, always being told what to do and never having a good idea? Be Markham, never given any details, and falls over himself complimenting Vance. Uh, and these are the first of three questions. And the answer, of course, is be Dave Arnold. Because the answer is never correct to be... <laughs> to be uh, D.A. Markham, because Markham is a district attorney who believes he's a cop and is neither a good cop or a good district attorney. And let's just be clear about Dave Arnold. You know, he's just kind of that typical sidekick who may not be very bright, but doesn't actively annoy me. And he does come through in the clutch with helping with capturing the criminals. And if you recall from a couple weeks ago, he has shopping skills that are the epitome of family shopping. So, yeah, I would definitely be Dave Arnold. Uh, And then uh, the options 
for the second question, have to wear makeup and wigs for every case, or have Sergeant Heath of your own police force hoping you make a mistake? I have to say that uh, the comparison between the two, Sergeant Heath is not actually all that bad. Yes, he's a bit of a hater of Philo Vance, but when it comes down to it, he does his job, and most of his grousing is behind Vance's back. But I actually have to say that I don't think it is a chore for Mr. Chameleon to create these disguises. And if I had those sort of skills, that would actually be neat to do. I mean, no wonder he finds an excuse to do it. I, of course, grew up in the 1980s, and we had the A-Team and Colonel Hannibal Smith, who was always doing one disguise or another. So personally, I would rather be chameleon finding a pretext to put on a disguise and keep my makeup budget up if I had that sort of skill set. And then the third option is would I rather be a villain against chameleon or a villain against Vance? As a criminal, the odds of beating either is essentially zero, so it's all down to style. On one hand, Vance would get into fisticuffs at a moment's notice to prove he's as tough as all the West Coast private eyes. On the other hand, Chameleon's shoutiness would give me a headache. That plus, if I were going to be caught, I'd rather because of something I did to slip up, rather than some nonsense that Chameleon finds out off screen. And I think also prior to this week, I suspected that Chameleon was judge, jury, and executioner, and so I would rather be caught by Vance. Even if not the case, I, I think I would take Vance's fisticuffs over Chameleon's shoutiness. And I mean, even with the fisticuffs, Vance half the time beat up someone who wasn't actually the killer. So you got good chances of not having yourself beat down before being tried. So, I, anyway, you cut it. I think that uh, Vance wins that. All right. Well, thanks so much. Appreciate the questions and comments, Derek. Now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Lisa. Lisa has been one of our Patreon supporters since July of 2015, currently supporting the podcast at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Lisa. And that will do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And if you're enjoying the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. All those great things that help YouTube channels to grow. We will be back with you next Thursday with another episode of Mr. Chameleon. But join us back here tomorrow for Yours Truly Johnny Dollar, where... Johnny Dollar. Why, man? How's your stomach, Johnny? What? Rich food give you any trouble? Who is this? Why, your old buddy, Angie Orsati. Oh, hi, Angie. Glad you got my message. Yeah. How about dinner tonight at Antoine's, Johnny? Shrimp, gumbo, oysters, Rockefeller. Yeah, sounds fine. Only I've got to do some work first. Man, I thought you were here in New Orleans on vacation. Nope. Little matter of fire insurance and the company's check for 16000 Somebody trying to cheat him out of it, huh? You won't believe this, Angie. Somebody turned it down. What? I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.